hey there, big, huge news. <laughs> it, it, I was already kind of on the edge of my seat, really totally excited about March 1 and Investor Day and learning more about the, you know, phase of the, uh, you know, Generation 3 automobile and what's going to happen in terms of the robo-taxi designs and all that kind of stuff, plus, you know, a bunch of help in terms of where the batteries are going and and how we're going to get the materials. I mean, all of that was super, super exciting. But now Elon has announced Master Plan 3 will be an additional benefit of that day. And if it's anything like Master Plan 1 and Master Plan 2, um, it's earth shaking. Okay. It is, it, Elon is going to change the world. The master plans are the, are the setup. They're the strategy, um, the goal setting. Um, and, uh, you know, you can look back at master plan one and master plan two. We're well along. Uh, master plan one is pretty much all worked out. Master plan two, we're well along. Uh, everybody's been waiting for master plan three for all, close to a year now. Um, wow. We're just a few weeks away. Just, uh, uh, 23 day, no, 20, less than that. Holy mackerel, it's going to get here quick. Anyway, March 1 is coming quickly. Uh, this is Randy Kirk. If you don't know who I am, I am Randy Kirk. I'm a YouTuber. I was a manufacturer for 29 years, and I'm going to be bringing uh, some of my manufacturing understanding today to what we're going to talk about. Um, so let's uh, dig right in. Uh, if you like the content, you know what to do. Let's not spend a lot of time worrying about that. Let's get down to the brass tacks. Okay. Elon Musk uh, has already told us that Master Plan 3 is going to deal with massive scaling. He told us that Investor Day would also talk about scaling, but we know that in, in the whole concept of Master Plan 3 is massive scaling. So, I don't think this is just like normal scaling. We're going to keep moving up a little bit at a time, but rather it has to do with, I believe, the goals that he's been talking about for some time and how do we get there from here? So I'm in this particular video, I'm going to spend all of the time talking about the batteries and how we get to Elon's goals with regard to the batteries. I think that's what he's going to be spending a lot of time on Master Plan 3 talking about. Uh, not to say that he won't talk about massive scaling of other things as well, but the batteries are key. The batteries go into various hosts, but the batteries are the basic building block of the entire project. We do know, Elon has said before, now maybe he'll change this, but we do know that he's, his goal is not just for Tesla. His goal for 2030, in this particular case, is for the world. So he is, as he has been with automobiles, saying that he's hoping to accelerate the adoption of electric vehicles and electricity and of renewable resources as, as methods for powering the world. He didn't care whether it was Tesla or if somebody could do it better than him or if somebody could do it better than Tesla. Or He knew that there would be a requirement for other manufacturers to come together to get the job done. And so this is not just about Tesla. Worldwide, he's shooting for 10 terawatt hours of battery production per year by 2030. We have a requirement for 20 times that to be deployed in order to make the complete transition to using electricity as opposed to fossil fuels. So with that in mind, we need 10, he believes 10 by 2030 is a reasonable goal. Now we know that Elon sets goals that are extremely hard to make and that sometimes maybe they're just impossible to make. He's been using that, that particular goal set for a long time now, even as people talk about there's not enough lithium. Just listen to a video the other day. In fact, I'll link it below. Uh, Jeffrey Dom saying uh, back in October, there's not going to be, there's no way we have enough lithium ca capacity by 2030 to hit that 10 kilowatt hour goal. Well, okay, we'll, we'll address that in a minute. He also does, well, okay, we'll, we'll address that in a minute. <laughs> I don't wanna get ahead of myself. All right, so if 10 kilowatt hours is the goal for the world, Elon says that he wants Tesla to be making, to be either making or buying three terawatt hours of that total amount. So that's part two. 
All right, so let's go back to part one now. Why, what's, what, what do we need 10 terawatt hours of battery production in order to do? So this is kind of my rough breakdown. 60 million cars and light trucks at 50 kilowatt average each would be three terawatt hours, okay? So there's 30% of the total. Four million trucks, buses, and other large vehicles like that would probably use an average of 600 uh, uh, kilowatts each. Um, and that would be another 2.4 terawatts. Then you need planes, trains, boats, uh, you know, ocean going vessels, uh, you know, container vessels and whatnot. Um, I'm going to just throw that out. I'm just going to grab the number right out of the air and say, we might need another terawatt to do that. And that would leave about 3.6 terawatts out of the 10 in order to do energy storage. And that would be a lot of energy storage. Keep in mind, energy storage, Jeff Dom also made the point in this video the other day, and I've made the point three or four weeks ago, you can look, look back at my videos. One of the sh things that's slowing up solar and wind deployment is the necessity of having battery to be part of the deployment in order to make it more efficient. So uh, uh, resources that could be going in now, uh, solar and wind that could be uh, manufactured and put in place now is not being put in place because there's no battery to back it up. Okay, so the more batteries, the more solar and wind deployment we get. All right. So the Tesla goal now of three terawatt of in-house and purchased uh, batteries combined, I think that this number is in flux right now because we've heard recently that uh, because of the, the new in, uh, Inflation Re Reduction Act, the IRA, that Tesla wants to make one terawatt of their own in-house production just in the United States. We also know that they're planning, to, they're already setting up production in Berlin. We're guessing they will set up production in Shanghai. And we're guessing, based on everything that we know about Tesla, that every single gigawatt factory that's set up is going to have a battery line uh, set up at the same time. So one has to suspect that at least two kilowatt, another one kilowatt hour, besides the one in the United States, we've got to be looking at least at another one from all of these worldwide resources, which would only lead, leave one uh, uh, terawatt hour. I might have been throwing the wrong number out there. I'm sorry if I did. I've been meaning terawatt all along here. So that would mean at least one, uh, only one terawatt hour that would be purchased um, and that seems like a low number. I'm beginning to believe that the three terawatt hour number is probably low, that it's probably more than three terawatt hours. That is the goal of Tesla by 2030, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter either way. Either way, it turns out to be a lot. So this would be 30% of all production of cars, trucks, and other light vehicles. This would mean th RV, all vehicles. This would be 30% of all battery storage at that time. It would be 30% of all vehicle charging stations in the world for both cars and trucks and boats and anything else. And it would be 30% of the electric power grid management. So this would be at bare minimum, $1.5 trillion worth of sales um, and probably at 30 to 40 percent profits with a 20 percent uh, uh, a, a remaining profit, a, 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 a total net profit before taxes of something on the order of 20 percent, an operating profit. That was the word I was looking for. Don't get old. <laughs> so anyway, 20 percent. So um, that's a lot of money. Uh, that is 300 billion dollars in net operating profit. Um, no matter how you slice that, no company has ever come close to those kind of numbers. Uh, Apple is doing that kind of revenue, but that's not their profit. Um, you know, it's, it would be way beyond uh, any ex any company that is currently planning for their expansion. Nobody's planning for three hundred billion dollars in operating profits, and that's just on cars, batteries, storage, etc. Nothing to do with Robotaxi, Optimus, or anything else that we talk about on other videos. Okay, so in order to get there, and this is what I think we're going to be talking about with Master Plan 3 and also with uh, the Investor Day, in order to get there, you have a step 
of a set of limiting factors, a step, a set of uh, materials and manufacturing capacities that are necessary to get there. So at the top of the list is chemistries. This is what, if you want to concentrate on something, if you want to get into the weeds and you want to really know what Tesla is doing, why they're doing it, and I think this is what's going to happen on March 1st, you got to know about the chemistries. So lithium is the primary chemistry today by a lot. It's a substantial percentage of the grand total of all batteries being made. There are other major chemistries coming along that could replace lithium. We'll talk about that in a second. Along with lithium on the more expensive cars, the cars that require the most power, the most, uh, uh, you know, the, the most acceleration, et cetera, they're typically going to use the nickel uh, type batteries. And there's some limitations on the amount of nickel that's available out there. However, for lower powered cars and cars that don't need to, you know, go zero to 60 in five seconds, uh, and for battery storage and other issues, you can go to sodium, I'm sorry, you can go to um, lead. So you have a lithium uh, a lead battery, um, and that allows a tremendous amount of additional material resources that are available out there. And that's already happened. There's a huge shift uh, to those kinds of batteries. Uh, manganese comes in and helps you to be able to make different chemistries in different ways. I am not going to tell you that I'm an expert on all these chemistries. The limiting factor, that's the guy to go to. Uh, he's got the, a great, great uh, show there. But so far, he's been unwilling to really make predictions about where we're going with these different chemistries. So I'm trying my best to kind of dig into that. And as I learn more and more and more, I'll share it with you folks. All right. So these chemistries, the two primary chemistries, uh, that's what's running the world today. But what's coming along is sodium. And there's some who are saying, well, sodium, it's not going to happen soon enough or whatever. The reality is CATL, the largest battery manufacturer in the world by far, way ahead of Tesla at this point, CATL is introducing a sodium battery this year that replaces lithium. So there's no lithium in the, in the battery. It's a sodium product. They're already building factories. They already have factories that are going to be producing that this year. And they believe that it's a realistic uh, replacement for a lot of the lithium applications. Uh, there's benefits to sodium. Uh, it's way less likely to catch on fire. Um, it, uh, has, uh, it can charge all the way to 100% without any problem. So anyway, there's a bunch of benefits to sodium. There's some negatives to sodium as well. It is also potentially less expensive than the lithium style batteries. So these are all issues. These chemistry issues are going to determine how much mining, additional mining is going to be necessary. There's tons of lithium. There's, the world has so much lithium. The salt water in the ocean is filled with lithium. <laughs> you know, there's so much lithium, but you have to be able to extract it from the ground, from clay, uh, or from brine, or from salt water. You need methods of extracting the lithium from whatever substrate it is currently existing in, and you need to do be able to do that effectively, efficiently, and cost-effectively. So. I spent another video, I think about a week ago, week 10 days ago, I spent an entire video talking about the potential for mining lithium out of salt water. It's already being mined out of brine uh, effectively and efficiently. Uh, salt water appears to be a, a, another method that is either very close to or is going to be used shortly uh, in smaller, smaller capacities at first, but there's at least a possibility we'll be able to get a lot of lithium from directly from salt water and certainly more lithium than we're getting now from brine uh, in, uh, in various ways. Again, please don't look to me for the details of the expertise. I'm a reporter <laughs> and I'm trying to learn as much as I can. Okay, so we can get more lithium. We can get a substitute for lithium, sodium. We can get more nickel and it's li very likely that that Elon has the nickel lined up for years for himself and other companies are certainly looking around trying to get as much nickel as they can. Um, but we have a substitute for nickel. So, and then there's dozens, maybe even multiple dozens of other potential chemistries that can be used to make these kinds of batteries. 
It's a question of making them effectively and efficiently. So one way or the other, I'm expecting Elon, I'm hoping that Elon is going to give us some insight into how he sees the chemistries out to 2030 and what chemistries are going to be used in order to get the kind of batteries that he is saying the world needs. That would be one major goal that I'm hoping that he's going to get to. So then you now you mine it, you extract it, but now you need to refine. Some of these uh, materials need to be, the, the way that they come out of the extraction process, they're not ready to go right into a battery. They have to be refined before they can go in the battery. So the refining process, we know that uh, Musk has, has realized that there's just not enough refining capacity for lithium in the world and other people weren't stepping up. So there is a refining uh, factory being built uh, now in Corpus Christi, uh, yeah, Corpus Christi, Texas. Uh, who knows whether there will be additional ones. I'm expecting and hoping that Elon will be talking on March 1st about what is the expectations with regard to refining, what is Tesla going to be doing in order to make sure there's plenty of refined materials, what does he expect other companies to do, what are, the, what are going to be the issues of getting to the point of having enough refining capacity. So that's going to be the second part of this story. So after refining, then you have the strategic placement of the manufacturing facilities for the batteries where there are the mining and the refining and the necessary transportation. So right now, Elon has spent a lot of time talking about how it's he wants to be able to bring these things together in a regional setups to where there will be the available material, minerals, the available refining, the available battery manufacturing capacity in regional settings. Now, whether that means on one continent, whether that means in a, a section of a continent, what are, I'm sure it's the closer that they can be together, the better, so that you're not transporting, as he says, you're not transporting all these atoms all around the world in order to get the final product. You reduce cost dramatically by not having to transport these materials. So you don't want to transport the raw material to someplace to mine it, I mean, to refine it, then take the refined product and transport that somewhere to make the batteries, make the batteries, and then transport that somewhere to go into the host. I mean, you, you can imagine what the cost of the transportation would be. All right. So now you got to manufacture the batteries. And in the case of manufacturing, you're talking about different form factors. You're talking about different uh, manufacturing techniques. You're talking about you know, better power uh, ratios. You're talking about better abilities to uh, have multiple recyclings. Uh, but listening to James, uh, to uh, James uh, Dom again, uh, he was talking about the fact that it's no big, these, these batteries, the batteries that are being made today are going to last for thousands of cycles. They're going to last for 20 years in a car and then another 20, same battery, 20 years in a car, and then another 20 years uh, in storage before it ever gets to the point of being recycled. And then it'll be 99% recyclable. So once we have enough batteries that have been out there for 40 years, uh, we'll no longer have to mine new raw materials because we'll just recycle the ones that we have as they come offline. But these batteries are going to last a very, very long time. This is no longer an issue. So that is, uh, that is another thing that came out of the same video that you may want to watch yourself. So this is what I'm hoping for on March 1. Where are the minerals? Which minerals are we going to use? How are they going to be refined? What kind of refining of processes are? Is Tesla going to be involved in? How much is Tesla involved in these different levels? How much does he expect Tesla to be involved? What are, what, what are the real facts with regard to reaching 10 terawatts by 2030 um, and, and Tesla reaching at least three terawatts of their own. Um, if uh, you agree with me that those are major, major issues that are going to affect not only the world, but also Tesla stock in a dramatic way, then um, I'm glad that you stayed to the end. Please like, please subscribe, please join Patreon. Um, we're uh, get, adding members all the time on Patreon. I really think I need another handful, maybe six, 12 more people on Patreon, and then we're going to really be able to start the fun. So uh, it's really been great today. Really been great to talk to you.